Welcome back to Learn Astrology with Mary. You can find me at www.maryinglish.com, maryinglish.co.uk and UK Astrologer. Oh, I don't know where to start. I get into that sort of excited state about things sometimes as I come on the podcast and think, oh, Mary, have you prepared your brain properly? I think I have. Now, I've spent the last few days thinking about, you know, what am I going to do in the podcast? And and I thought, I don't know, I want to do something about Mercury and Venus. And the fact that in your chart, Mercury can't be mathematically too far away from your Venus. And I thought, well, that'd be an interesting thing to cover. Because Mercury and Venus can never be further than 76 degrees apart. So, If you're thinking that 30 degrees is one sign of the zodiac, 60 degrees is two signs of the zodiac, 76 degrees will be three signs of the zodiac and they can never be more than, this is Mercury and Venus we're talking about, never be further than three signs away from each other and with doing its aspects they can't be further than 76 degrees degrees and there isn't an aspect that's a degree of that there's a a sextile um which is 60 degrees and any other degree between mercury and venus other than a conjunction is mathematically astronomically whatever you want to like call it impossible and i thought you know it's really interesting venus is all about love and affection and the things that we like and our taste and our values etc and mercury is all about how we communicate and the relationship that you have between your mercury and your venus will be sort of like you know how much do i love myself how much do i love other people and can i talk about it you know and if if there isn't any aspect between your mercury and your venus which quite a lot of times in people's charts there isn't unless they're having a sextile which is 60 degrees but they can't have a square they can't have an opposition none of those things are absolutely possible and i saw going on with this sort of thinking and stuff and then and then i went down one of those astrological rabbit holes because what i did was i thought to to get ready for this podcast i go on to um astro uh, the astro um, astro data bank tool the search tool for astro data bank which allows you to search for various different things that are in people's charts you can search for signs of the zodiac or aspects or placements or degrees or blah, 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 and all this so i started doing that and i thought no actually that's not really what i want to investigate and don't ask me how i don't know how i got into it but i thought i'll i'll look at what happens if you've got i really can't remember my thinking though let me there what happens if you've got mercury retrograde and venus retrograde and they're conjunct So I thought, well, I've just been told by um, Ray Orion in her dummies that Venus and Mercury can never be further than 76 degrees apart. So the only aspect that could possibly happen will be a sextile or it'll be a conjunction or it'll be a nothing cool or it'll be a sesquidrate or one of them stupid little aspects I never bother with. And so I started searching on um, the Astro Data Bank search tool thingy. And I used the criteria of, so first one's Mercury retrograde, and then I did Venus retrograde, and then I did Mercury and Venus conjunct. Okay. So without putting you to any more agony, because you're what the hell are you talking about, Mary? What I discovered was so interesting. I don't know if I'm going to confuse you telling about it, telling you about it. We are going to use some charts and I am going to send out a distress signal. And I'm going to ask for people that might have this themselves. So what I discovered when I did this search, so Mercury retro, Venus retro, Mercury and Venus conjunct, because I knew that they could be conjunct. Know that anyway. What happened was the dates changed. So because I'd called up, um, I think it was 442 charts. Let me just double check. Hold on. Yeah, it only called up 442 charts. And I thought, oh, that's not an awful lot. I was expecting to be sort of flooded with the blinking things. And then when I went further 
through because I'd used the years nine it starts at 1900 because that's all their database includes and um, what I discovered was the following so from February so in February 1902 so in February 1992, there was a number of people that were born with that combo. Mercury retrograde and Venus retrograde and for it conjunct. And there was some in uh, April, May 1905. And there were some in November, December 1906. There were some in June, July 1908. And some in August slash September 1911, which in total is a, is a period of nine years. And then there was a gap. So I was looking at all these dates. And it, it got up to, I think I got as far as 1911. I don't forget, I'm not very good at maths, okay? So maths isn't my top subject. So I get to 1911. And then all of a sudden, the results from my search jumped. And it went to 12th of February, 1942. And I thought, well, I've just been looking at 1911. How could that happen that there's nothing now of that uh, aspect, Mercury retrograde, conjunct Venus retrograde how can there be none now until 1942 anyway that sent me down an absolute astro.com <laughs> rabbit hole and what I discovered was and now I don't know if anybody else has discovered I don't even know how I'd search for it and then I'm not even interested if anybody else has discovered it I was just feeling so excited about having discovered something for myself supposedly because I hadn't read about it anywhere else um that that configuration of mercury retrograding and venus retrograding and being conjunct doesn't happen all the time and also seems to happen in a funny sort of cyclical thing so they stopped those people stopped being born in 1911 didn't start being born again until 1942 which is a gap of 31 years and then over the next nine years and the years are 42 45 46 48 so yeah 4851 over the next nine nine years there's a bunch of other people born with that configuration but their months of february april november june slash july august slash september and then that started to repeat itself as well when i did it to the next bunch which is um 85 86 88 91 so that's a nine year period and there was a 34 year gap between the last one which was 51 and the next one which was 85 and i was away with the fairies and then it stopped so i got to august 1991 and there weren't any more and i thought well why is that no because once again there's this sort of uh, it does it for sort of nine years. Now, Venus has, uh, sorry, Venus goes retrograde once every 18 months. And it does it for 40 days and 40 nights. And you think, you know, that sounds like something out of the Bible. I'm sure people went off and stuck themselves in the desert and stuff and contemplated whatever, 40 days and 40 nights. How interesting. So that's probably, you know, why various different, older books talk about you know dark night the soul and whatever 40 days before that's when venus goes retrograde it only does it for 40 days and 40 nights and mercury only ever retrogrades for exactly three weeks and it's exactly three weeks now we also have to remember that when it comes to astrology and astronomy we've created a calendar in the west here and we do 365 days a year and this and that and the other and not everything obviously corresponds with those things but the cycles that the planets have are very particular and apart from uranus which is a totally flipping erratic planet don't ask me about that i love uranus but it's very erratic Venus and Mercury aren't. They're super, super... Well, all the planets are predictable because otherwise we wouldn't be able to do an ephemeris. But it's sort of like, what a funny cycle. We do nine years in the 1900s and then we do another nine years in the 40s to the 50s and then another nine years from the 80s to the 90s and then this massive gap and then because the reason it stopped at 91, it's not going to happen again until next year and i was thinking oh how exciting um is next going to happen in march 2025 and there's a 34 year gap between 91 and 25 so we've done a 31 year gap we've done a 34 year gap 
we've done another 34 year gap and then when I went into the future because like I'm right down that rabbit hole now (laughs) there's the nine year cycle which will be from 25 to 28 29 2031, 2034, then it's going to be a break for 31 years. So we've had a 31 year break, a 34 year break, a 34 year, oh, and we're back to a 31 year break where this won't happen. That Venus and Mercury will not conjunct in the same size while they're retrograding for another 31 years after the next time it does it. And I'm thinking, you know, we've lived through a pandemic, we've lived through well, we, I have, and you have as well, otherwise you wouldn't be bloody listening. We've lived through a... Well, actually, it does depend how old you are. If you're very small, you might, <laughs> you might, you might only have just been born. But we've lived through a pandemic. We've lived through, through quite a lot of astrological weirdness. And as you know, I'm terribly into indigos and one-sided charts. And part of this are people born in August 1991. So there are some indigos that will be born with, and let me just check if the examples I'm using have got that's so hold on one second. Yes, the people that are born in 91. Now, as you know, and if you don't know, please go back to episode 21, that what I call indigos, the signature for that is Uranus and Neptune conjunct. It only does that once every 170 years. And having a one-sided chart and all your planets on one side, and I'm going to be sharing an example of that person. And this particular person, who I'm going to share their chart with in a minute, has also Venus retrograde and Mercury retrograde, which only happens once every either 31 years or 34 years, and only during a nine-year cycle that isn't every year it's every 18 months okay so again we're talking about something astrologically that doesn't happen every day of the week then i decided to drive myself even crazier and i did go back and see if i have ever read for anybody that has that signature and tick box the answer is yes but i didn't know about this then and i also don't know what it must feel like to have it. I do know what it feels like to have Mercury retrograde because I was born with that. And I do have a very good friend who has Venus retrograde and we've done a podcast on Venus retrograde. We had a really lovely lady who was very happy to share her chart. She was an Aries, was, is an Aries and she shared her chart with the Venus retrograde. And we talked a lot about retrograde planets with with Gregory Rosek, so we went all the way through retrograde planets with him, and I interviewed him twice, and the second time, we just concentrated on Venus retrograde, and that was in episode 266. But what I discovered was about Mercury retrograde, Venus retrograde, and them being conjunct in the same sign to each other doesn't happen every day of the week at all and what I liked about it while I was doing it because I'm just scribbling this down on a piece of paper while I'm doing it and I didn't have a computer program and I'm sure if I had one of those astrology software ones I'm sure I could have done a search you know Mercury retrograde Venus retrograde and then it might have given me the dates I had to keep going to the ephemeris for various of those years that uh, the data bank had given me and go into the ephemeris and check which month it was because I wanted to sort of literally f- see for myself about Mercury retrograde, Venus retrograde. Anyway, I will include in this podcast next year's ephemeris and it's March you need to look at because that's when it's going to happen. And what I liked about the sort of way this it worked, it went February, April, May, November, December, June, July, August, September in, in the in the 1900s then it went February April November June July August September did it again and then uh, in the 80s it did um, March slash April November June August and then the next one coming up is going to be March May slash June December July August November and there was never any Januaries um, and there were never any what was the other month that was missing yeah there was never it never seemed to occur with a January I was like oh and it's really awful when this happens because I I couldn't do anything else until I'd done it you know it's like and I was going I was going what about this what about that 
that. And I like the way the cycle went. It's over a period of nine years, every 18 months in that nine years time. And then this, this big gap when it doesn't happen again. And obviously, I presume when you think about the, the way that the planets orbit, for them to even, two planets to be conjunct doesn't happen all the time. But for them to be conjunct and retrograde is obviously what makes it less. But this big gap of either 31 years or 34 years, that, that fried my brains. I don't know, I couldn't even imagine it in my mind about why that wouldn't happen. And it doesn't, and it hasn't, and it won't um, for that long, long amount of time. And then I was thinking, because you don't follow my thought process, you'll get a headache. I was thinking, oh, do you know, these people, if they were born in August 1991, and they had a baby next year in March 2025, then they could be born with this Mercury venus retrograde conjunct and so could their baby be born with that as well and what would that be like and i was like thinking how can i interview these people (laughs) so if you were born uh of the dates which i will put up on the show notes and check your chart please don't just tell me that you were born on those dates but check your chart if you've got venus retrograde and mercury retrograde and they're conjunct so they have to be a conjunction so they have to be less than six degrees apart from each other and in the same sign because they'd be outside but in the same sign then you're you're part of this weird sort of amount of people that have that signature that just doesn't happen that often which will make you terribly terribly special i love finding out things that are special so let's kick off we've got uh two people's charts i haven't done millions because i'm sending out the message to you now if you've got venus retrograde and mercury retrograde in the same sign and conjunct then ping me over an email and then i can ask you and maybe we'll get you to give me a summary of your life and how it's affected you yeah because if I was just to analyse, and don't forget, I have read for at least one person that has this, and I didn't make a big thing about it because that's not what they needed to know at that precise moment in time. This is me being an astrological nerd here. This is the sort of things that astrologers get excited about, but a client probably wouldn't. Okay, so you need to keep that in mind. My excitement would not have been this particular person's that I've read for. Um, if you're born with this, and I was just given an interpretation, so Mercury retrograde, I know what that's like. You cannot learn the way that you, most people would teach you. You have to find your own way of learning. Mercury retrograde people feel better being able to repeat stuff because retrograde means repeat it means go back and redo the whole thing about when mercury retrogrades is go back and revise it revision revise redo rethink whatever and so people with mercury retrograde might get an idea about something to start with but they absolutely need to repeat it in some way for it to sink in now myself and my supervisor and i've known her for absolutely millions of years and we've worked together in lots of homeopathy and she's retired now and i'm not retired but I know how her mind works because she also has Mercury retrograde and I know she doesn't mind about being reminded to do something. If somebody reminds me but I've remembered then I get a bit umpity but if somebody reminds me and I've forgotten and they don't make a thing about it I'm very grateful that somebody's reminded me. Yeah, But Mercury retrograde people need to be reminded. They also learn not textbook way, okay? Now, Venus retrograde, which we've done separately, and Gregory did a whole episode on it, and I think, unfortunately, at one point, the audio went a bit funny. Venus is all about love. Depends what sign the zodiac it's in in your chart. But when Venus, not but, but as Venus retrogrades, because it is the planet about love and affection and uh, the grace of things and the things that we love and the attitude towards the way we decorate our homes and and values and um, what's the word that's on the back of my brain? decor the way you you decorate your home that's very much a venus type of thing if that's retrograde in your chart 
and it's your attitude towards love, okay, so we just take it as far as relationships go, then there'll be a going in and out of relationships because Mercury is in and out of thinking, need to retrograde, need to, to repeat. And Venus, if we're just using the word love, is love and re-love. So there might be a loss of a love and a needing to go back to a previous love and return to the love. So it's not a forward planning type of thing. Now, it has to be said, sometimes people that are born with Venus retrograde can find it more difficult to have long-term, settled, blah-de-blah, -blah, boring relationships, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Yeah, it isn't something that really does it for them. But there will be this sort of um, needing to review and to go back as far as love goes, yeah? Um, and their way of loving is is going to have to be repetitious they're probably going to need to be reminded that they're loved or to remind themselves now remember in a course that the only aspect that you can get between mercury and venus anyway is a sextile or nothing else at all other than a conjunction if you've got a conjunction and you're just mercury and venus conjunct then you can talk about love and communicate now imagine if your mercury is retrograde it's going to be more difficult to talk about the sort of love you want and also it depends depending on when this flipping happens is is your mercury in the same sign as your sun sign because the sun is who we are and i've talked about that before what happens if your mercury is out of sign so it's not the same sign as your sun sign because it can either be in your own sign or the signs that are adjacent so if you're a sun sign pisces your mercury can be either in your own sign or the sign before you which is uh Aquarius or the sign after you which is Aries and they operate in completely different ways okay you with me I haven't lost you so far good now I didn't go as far in this analysis as to discover what signs of the zodiac this happens I didn't search also for the sun sign I was only searching for mercury okay and Venus I wasn't searching sun sign as well so I'm not absolutely sure whether or not this funny little configuration happens with every sign of the zodiac okay it doesn't happen every month and it happens in an 18 month cycle because that's how venus takes 18 months to go through all the signs of the zodiac and then it does the funny retrograde thing for 40 days out of that 18 months so I, I can't say for sure if it covers every sign of the zodiac no way of knowing the two examples I'm going to give you today is one person has their Mercury in the same sign as their sun sign and the other person doesn't, okay? And I thought it was quite interesting about the doesn't person, but we'll come on to her in a minute. Taste, that was the word I was thinking of earlier. <clears throat> I couldn't bring it to me, poor little Mercury retrograde mind. Uh, Venus is, is also about taste, not physically... <coughs> taste but the taste that you have and the choices that you make with your clothes or your decor or whatever Venus is about that now first chart example is a lady called Chrissy Hind and the only reason I'm using her a she was on um, Astro Data Bank but b I've actually heard of her quite a lot of times I go in there and I try and find somebody it's like I have never heard of this person but I've had, heard of her and she was the singer songwriter of the rock band The Pretenders. Um, she was born in Akron in Ohio, the daughter of a part-time secretary and Yellow Pages manager. She graduated from Farstone high school in Akron and stated I was never too interested in high school I mean I never went to a dance I never went out on a date I never went steady I became it became pretty awful for me except of course I could go see bands and that was the kick I used to go to Cleveland just to see any bands so I was in love a lot of the time but mostly with guys in bands that I had never met for me, knowing that Brian Jones was out there and later Iggy Pop was out there made it kind of hard for me to get too interested in the guys that were actually around me. I had uh, bigger things in mind. So she's a sun sign Virgo with a Libra ascendant. If I was going to make a prescription for her, Libra ascendant is make sure you get a partner. 
Um, and the Sun and Venus and Mercury are all in the 11th. The 11th is about altruism, save the planet, groups of people, being with others. Generally speaking, people with the Sun in the 11th don't totally want to be on their own. And also people with a Libra ascendant feel much better being in a partnership. Her Neptune is conjunct to the ascendant. I think that's right. Is it conjunct? No, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20. Yes, it is. We want about astro.com. Neptune's conjunct the ascendant. Ignore the aspects that are given on there because Neptune's 18 degrees in the ascendant's 23 degrees Virgo. Uh, 23 degrees Libra. Um, she's got moon in Scorpio. Don't mess with me in the second house. So don't mess with my money. And her moon is square to her Mercury, but only because her moon is 28 degrees Scorpio and her Mercury is 2 degrees Virgo. So it's out of sign, but it's within orb to make that calculation. Um, so... In 1973, she moved to London with her art background. She landed a job, but left. And she did a pretenders that started in 1978. Um, not going into too much detail, because all I'm doing is reading off the Wikipedia page, but you can pop over there yourself. And so I thought it would be interesting that Mercury's how we communicate, and also uh, songwriting skills. You've got to think about that that's going to come in your Mercury and how your Mercury suspects and whatever it does and blah, blah, blah. Um, she's got dual citizenship with the UK and now she she follows Vashanivism, a branch of Hinduism, and travels to India once every year to further her studies. So she married, or was going to marry a guy called her mother... Right. So born in America, she'd long maintained dual citizenship with the UK, but in the 70s, unable to obtain a work visa, she asked Sid Vicious and Johnny Rotten, they were in a band called the Sex Pistols, to marry her, though for various reasons neither did. Maybe they didn't want to. She went back to the US briefly before returning to the UK. In 1982, she planned to worry, marry Ray Davis, and get married in Guildford, but the guy in the this is what she says the guy in the registry office took one look at us and suggested we come back another time. So in 1983, she had a daughter, Natalie, with this Davis guy, I presume, and then she married Jim Kerr, who was the lead singer of the Simple Minds Band in 1984, and together they had a daughter called Jasmine, Yasmin, in 1985. Um, and they lived in Scotland and got divorced in 1990. Then she married a Colombian artist and sculptor called Lucho Breviera from 97 to 2002. So she's been married twice. Is that right? Married twice. But been with various different relationships, which is what you expect with a Libra ascendant. Um... But Venus definitely has, inverted commas, suffered because she's found it more difficult to stay in a relationship. There's no longevity. There isn't longevity anyway with Virgo as a sign. They're not a sign that will do the same thing forever and ever and ever. Leave, leave that to the Scorpios and the Taurians. So the ruling planet is her chart, because she's got a Libra ascendant, and the ruling planet is Venus, and Venus is retrograde, and it's in the 11th. So there'll be a necessity to want to love someone who's friends with her, or who is also in a group. So the person that she married was in a band, so that fits in nicely. Nicely. Um, I liked the quote on the Wikipedia page um, from Madonna saying, I saw her play in Central Park in August 1980 performing the pretenders. Not that she said that's in brackets. She was amazing. The only woman I'd, I'd seen in performance where I thought, yeah, she's got balls, she's awesome. It gave me courage and inspiration to see a woman of that kind of confidence in a man's world. The musical world is very male-dominated for sure. Um, but interesting about 
Mercury and how we think and how we communicate and stuff, she says there that um, it says on there about her voice training, she says that she never had any formal lessons. She says, uh, distinctive voices in rock are trained through many years of many things. Frustration, fear, loneliness, anger, insecurity, arrogance, narcissism, or just sheer perseverance, anything but a teacher. So that's evidence there about the Mercury retrograde not wanting to be taught or even finding it difficult to be taught because they need to find their own way of learning stuff. And they can't say she hasn't learned anything because she's re- released umpteen albums and she's been on the scene for jolly long time and whatever and she's been very successful in her career so neither the venus retrograde nor the mercury retrograde have held her back at all we have to remember that she is a virgo virgo's quite a particular sign and wants to do things in a particular way she has got pluto and mars in leo and that's in her 10th house of career we've got Jupiter in Aries retrograde, so that's retrograde as well. Um, opposition to Neptune in Libra in the 12th. But Neptune's pretty happy in the 12th. Um, it's a ruling planet to the 12th, so that's happy there. But we've got Jupiter retrograde in the 6th. I think she's a vegan or a vegetarian. She opened a vegan restaurant, yeah. I think she's quite sort of into all of that. Fair enough, fair enough. That's quite a, a Virgo thing. Thingy. and it's interesting sort of Virgo is interested in health and 10th house is a little bit like Aquarius and quite a lot of times when people are into veganism or vegetarianism it isn't the taste or anything like that it's the freedom of the animals is what they're campaigning for fair enough fair enough fair enough but there's quite an emphasis on the Wikipedia page that she really really truly wanted to be in a group so she didn't sort of come into herself until she had her own group she tried to go into it because while she was in London the punk thing happened but she really wanted to be in a group and that's very much an 11th house thing so she did achieve that but she had to lead it had to be her group not because that's what she was looking for she wanted to be part of a group and again it's more difficult if you're a woman to to do that you know why is a bloke going to want to have you in your in your band unless you're particularly attractive or gonna do the sex appeal thing Uh, so for her to have her own band well done well done now the next chart i'm going to share is from a lady called shay akiworo and she was born on the 13th of august 1991 so she's a british lady and i'll tell you a bit more about her in a minute but we'll just cover her chart she has sun in leo and it's conjunct jupiter and it's in the 10th and also in her 10th is her mercury and her venus which are retrograde and they're exactly conjunct and they're exactly this is a virgo thing now they're exactly four degrees one's 33 minutes 27 and venus is 30 minutes 40 so the mercury and the venus could not be any more conjunct now shay has a scorpio ascendant and pluto in the first house i don't know what pluto in the first house feels like and she has a very very one-sided chart she's got planets in one two three four five yes yeah, six houses we don't include Karen in the count for indigo one-sided charts. And she has Uranus and Neptune conjunct in Capricorn. And they're both retrograde as well. And they're in her third house. So the only planets that aren't retrograde in her house is her house in her chart. Are the sun and the moon, which can't retrograde. Mars, which can but isn't. And Jupiter, which can but hasn't. Um, and her Pluto isn't retrograde as well so that's very helpful <clears throat> she doesn't have too many challenging aspects there is a moon square Uranus slash Neptune square and the sun is square to Pluto which can sort of add to the drama in life but she's a sun sign Leo so there's going to be more drama now I th- what I thought was really interesting about her backstory is uh, she calls herself or she called herself now hold on she's a ref- a reformed politician what's the word she uses hold on hold on hold on oops where's me pause 
oops, better get the pronunciation right, it's Shei, Shei. Um, she, on the first part of her website, I'm sure she calls herself, yeah, founder, CEO, author, speaker, and recovering politician, uh, because for a, an amount of time, she was a representative in London. She served for a four years term on Newham Council as the youngest elected female council member in East London. So both Say's pioneering leadership and passion for social justice is evident throughout her teenage years and into her mid-twenties. From running for the young mayor of Newham to producing several community forums and events and consulting for the borough of Waltham Forest for six years. Um, Now she rose to fame or infamy I don't know what's the better way of putting it because of the political things that she was involved in she had what's called a public face and very unfortunately she was cyber bullied not just bullied but bully bully bullied and so that was quite a motivating force for her to construct a a tech charity called Glitch and that is to help people that are suffering online abuse. So, um, yeah, she's a force to be reckoned with. She's absolutely lovely. There's um, a number of, or she's done a, um, a TED talk, so I can put you the link to the TED talk. So we've got the Venus and the Mercury retrograde. Now, since she was only born in 1991 and she's an indigo and she's got so many retrograde planets, I'm wondering now when or what is she going to go back and return to? Because it's necessary when you have your Mercury retrograde to return and go back to something. So it'd be interesting to see. Now, she has, uh, she's a speaker, Lala. She's an author. And the name of the book is How to Stay Safe Online because of the digital abuse that she had. Um, And that is what her TED Talk was about. Um, I'll put the link to to her website itself anyway so you can find all the stuff from the horse's mouth, so to speak. She's got moon in Libra, so it must have been really, really hard for her to have suffered from the online abuse because moon in Libra really doesn't like to argue or to have arguments happening. And the moon is in the 12th. Um, But there is that big square between the sun slash Jupiter and Pluto. So there can be this... I will rise from the ashes type of thing so I will have to suffer to be able to rise again and she trust me she did it was it was, it was absolutely horrible um what happened to her. you don't want to read the things that were said it was like oh my goodness me um and so with her being an indigo there's a distinct possibility that um she's going to have more of an understanding of what is necessary for humanity because the story about indigos is they are there to light the way for us spiritually not necessarily us practically but spiritually because the whole sort of church thing maybe that's not such a good idea in the way that it's been manifested especially if you look at certain christian religions um and so I think that she's a lovely representation of having the Venus and Mercury retrograde, but because of what happened to her, it didn't put her down or away. And they are in Virgo, okay, so she should be very specific about it, that that was the motivating force for her to do something for the better good, so to speak. It is a stellium in the 10th. The 10th is career and her career is obviously very important for her. I don't think there's any mention about personal stuff on her Wikipedia page. Let me just double check. No, nothing about her being married or having kiddies or anything like that yet. Not to say that it won't happen. Um, But generally speaking, Moon with Libra, people with Moon in Libra or Libra Ascendant that need to be in a partnership at some point. So, I don't know, this is an early life that we're looking at here. Um, not everything will have manifested just yet. She's only born 91. She's only, she's only a babe. She's not she's not millions of years old. Um, so, today we've been talking about 
Mercury retrograde, Venus retrograde being conjunct while they're retrograding is a cyclical thing that happens in nine year segments every 18 months with 31 year or 34 year gaps in between those nine years how it doesn't happen every day of the week how auntie mary was super excited to find it because i was like oh it's a cycle i didn't know about and that venus retrogrades for 40 days and 40 nights and mercury retrogrades for three weeks so those two coming together is rarer so if you were born on the years that i'm going to put on the show notes or you've checked your chart and you've seen that you've got venus and mercury retrograde conjunct then ping me over an email and we'll talk about your chart you know what has been the positives and the negatives what's been the the good things and what have been the challenges for you having those two planets retrograde and conjunct so i hope you have a fab week if you're subscribed to the newsletter there's a new edition coming out on monday the first and in that newsletter is a 20 percent discount that only lasts so the discount will only be operable on my booking app until the 31st of july let me just check that's right sorry just checking how many days around july uh, so it goes to the end of july so it's a 20 percent discount so you can book a session it doesn't happen doesn't have to happen your session doesn't have to be booked for the month of July you can go up to I think my calendar takes you about three months in advance but the discount can only be used until the 31st of July 2024 so if you're catching up with this podcast then I'm just letting you know that it the discount code will expire on the 31st of July and yeah can't use it because the app won't accept it um, but if you are already subscribed make use of it because it ain't gonna happen again this year it's a special offer that i'm doing for newsletter subscribers so if you haven't subscribed and you want to be able to make the best of the discount then please ping me an email mary at maryenglish.co.uk and i'll stick you on the newsletter list you can unsubscribe it anytime you like but if you just want to do it just to get the discount then send me the email and i'll subscribe you so i hope you have a fab week and i'll be back next week Bye-bye now.